Hey everybody, it is January 28th, which means we're on the 25th episode because my daily vlog kind of went to an every other day vlog a little while ago, but for good reason. As If you don't know, go back a couple episodes, you'll explain. I can put a card up here or there, wherever it is. Anyhow, I'm out for a quick walk uh, in on my lunch break and just want to do the intro now and then I'll probably finish this video when I get home. So without much further ado, uh, let's get into the intro, shall we? So we're doing a little story time today. Like I mentioned in the opening, uh, things have kind of gotten a little bit busy, crazy and hectic. And so I'm doing more of an every other day vlog -uary until we get into February. But I guess vlog -uary still technically works for February. Vlog vlog -uary? I don't know. But I'm still doing 31 episodes either way because that was my, what my goal was. Anyhow, so I was kicking around different ideas of what to do for today's video. Facebook helped me out with a perfect little prompt. You get those little memory reminders sometimes on Facebook. And this one was from 10 years ago where I said, I can't believe in a few days I'm leaving for New York to be on my first national TV show. So that was it. It was February of 2010. Uh, I believe, I want to say like February 2nd, 3rd or 4th, somewhere in there, did my very first national TV appearance. Now, just leading up to that, it wasn't just random, randomly happening. I'd started off as a keeper in 2000 for the San Diego Zoo. 2009, I was uh, selected through interview process and everything else to be a temporary spokesperson for the launching of an area called Elephant Odyssey at the zoo. We did go to New York with that uh, 2009 sort of campaign from January to, to May, uh, but it was mostly for print media and for radio shows. I think we did two radio shows. Um, and then I went back to being a keeper because that was what the position was for. Um, and then December 2009, I said, hey, January uh, 2010, would you like to come back and be spokesperson again for our other area? We're re relaunching our polar bear area. And I was like, sure, great, love it. And then I found out we were going back to New York again, which is super exciting because I had never been to New York before, shy of the time I went in 2009 uh, for the uh, print media stuff we did in the radio shows. So I was always excited to go back to New York. It's going to be February. It's going to be cold. But we're also going to do our first national TV show. It was a CBS Early Show is what it was called at the time. It's gone through two changes since I was on it. So I don't know if that's my fault or not if I broke it. But the point of this story is uh, I get asked quite often now, do you ever get nervous when you go on TV and do these, these appearances? And there is an element of being nervous, but uh, I try very hard to be very prepared. And I think I've psychologically put myself through this so many times that there are nerves, but I can kind of dial them in and focus it to be more of excited energy. This is a technique I talk about, I think, in an old video I did earlier this year um, in the series From the Desk about public speaking. But I'm not going to get into that part now. I'm just going to tell you the story. Um, so I had, I, I, uh, it was a lot of preparation to go on one of these shows. And uh, for me, uh, the San Diego Zoo is, is, is huge. I mean, it is, it's a world, it's a, world-class facility, a world-class organization it is well-known around the world for what it does. And I I guess the idea of they have entrusted me to represent them on this, whatever it was, three, four, five minutes of television on national TV was a wasn't overwhelming, but it was, it was, it's a huge honor, of course. But I mean, it's kind of like, wow, that's it's a bit of a responsibility. <laughs> and so you have that in the back of your mind. And then the responsibility I had to the, the other uh, animal caretakers that were with me and the animals that were with me. And not only making sure that I was able to uh, present the information we wanted to present accurately and correctly, but to make sure too that we're, we're sending the message that um, these animals are to be respected uh, and we respect them. And what we're talking about was um, some climate change and some endangered species. And so it was a lot. It was a lot on my plate and a lot of focus on all the logistics about getting the animals to the studio and, and doing everything safely and appropriately. And you have all these things you're focused on. I, I didn't have much time to think about the bigger, oh my gosh, uh, which is being on national TV for the first time ever. And, uh, and, and I really, again, so many moving parts. And I spent a lot of time studying the show. I spent probably two weeks at least 
DVRing the show, watching the show, getting to know who all the players were, who who's the you know, news and weather and whatever, and how's the relationships between these two anchors and how does that work and how is the cadence of the show? What audience are they targeting with this kind of show? So I did a lot of homework on this too. So saw the set on my TV quite a bit. And there's no rehearsal on morning shows like that. It's you roll in, you you do your thing and you roll back out. And we got in there, we got all settled. It's a pretty tight space as most New York studios are. And we had everything staged right. We got handlers here with these animals and those animals. We know which way everyone's going on. And now I'm like, I kind of, I'm now on set facing the camera. And, and you kind of had that moment then where I was like, wow, this is actually kind of cool. This is the this is the set of the TV show I've been watching for the last, you know, several weeks, figuring it all out. I'm like, okay, that's where, oh, the camera angle there. I never would have known that's how they do it. And then the producer comes over and tells me, you know, we're doing weather, we're going to commercial, we'll come out of commercial, do one little brief thing, and we're going to come over to you. And so they get me all set up, we have the animal set, and now it's just waiting for the commercial, waiting for weather. And as they're doing weather, and it's like, it's only supposed to be two minutes of weather, and then a 30 second uh, teaser for something come up after my segment, and then me. And that, that two minutes of weather was such a long two minutes. Um... That's when my mind started to really get to me. That's when it became this, oh my gosh, this is it. This is this is sort of the big deal. You know, this is a national TV show with, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of viewers. This is me representing this amazingly huge organization that I grew up with, you know, holding up as this huge, amazing entity. And it still is. I still hold it up to that. Um, and I could just feel, like, in the moment, I could just feel this uh, i think for the first time that i can recall or at least in this moment that i can think of now even when i tell the story to others um i do not recall another time in my life where i felt like i could feel the blood rushing out of my face as i had this oh crap moment and there's other words you can use um and it, you know immediately it's your mouth gets dry and your hands get clammy and your heart rate is it just all the, the triggers of the body being nervous, that fight or flight response start kicking in on me because I had a moment to think about it. And, you know, all I got is that two and a half minutes, two minutes of weather and a half minute of, uh, of a prompt and then, and then my, my segment. And in that moment, I recognized I was going into panic mode. And that's the worst because you, you now become hyper-conscious of the fact that your mouth is so dry that when you're talking, what does it sound like? Which then your focus changes instead of talking about things you're supposed to talk about. You're so inwardly focused, you are undoubtedly going to forget what you want to say or not say it correctly, or it becomes even more of an issue because it starts to become this loop of like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So, yeah, wonderfully enough, I, I mean, it, it just because I practice, I think, and because I was so prepared and because I've done a lot of local media, I was just start talking to myself inside my head, not out loud, thankfully. You know, this is just me talking about stuff that I know about, and it's no different than talking to all the other folks in media that I've worked with here in San Diego. It's just a matter of it's a different set and different people, but it's all the same. Otherwise, you know, it's just me talking about animals and doing my thing. And, and also I had been in studios outside of San Diego. We sometimes would go to Phoenix or San Francisco or Los Angeles for local media. So again, you don't psychologically get weirded out because it's not the giant national footprint, but it's going to different places and doing your thing. So I just kind of reassured myself this was no different. And shy of me speaking too long about things, I know, big surprise, right? Me speaking on and on too long about animals. Uh, so we did run out of time near the end of the segment, which was unfortunate. I didn't time that part well. But overall, the piece went well. Uh, the the team that I was with did a wonderful job. Uh, the segment came off nicely. And, um, you know, I look at that piece now and I think, wow, that's a real rookie <laughs> rookie presentation. Um you could tell I was definitely, uh, I, well, I, you know, you could say I was nervous. You could see, if you know me, you would know I was a little more uptight and tense than usual. A little more, not nervous per se, but a little more um, mechanical because I was really trying to bear down and focus and not freak out. Um, but yeah, that was it. My very first national TV appearance. I almost completely lost it right before we went live. And... Um, it all then in the moment of doing it, it all goes by so fast. Suddenly you're packing up and heading back out of the studio and you're like, I don't even know what I said. What did I say? Because your brain is just not engaged. So luckily, you know, I could go back and watch it later and had other people with me. We're like, no, no, you did fine. You did good. Everything you said, everything you're supposed to, but 
man, it's just a weird thing, a whole weird psycho psychology of it. And the other part I want to get to real quick, because I, I know I'm blathering on as I do. Now, 10 years later, having done uh, hundreds of national television shows across the country from New York to Los Angeles and everything in between, cable shows and night shows and morning shows, um, what a privilege it is to be able to do that for one. But what a, I can't still, I'm still like the 12 year old me going, wow, wouldn't it be cool to do that thing with animals? to just know that that's what I've been able to do so far in the last 10 years and, and, and feel comfortable enough about it that I can, I can be called up tomorrow and be told I'm going on a show and go, okay, I know what needs to be done. And that's now a skill that I have and an experience that I have enough that it's part of my, my work. And I'm, I'm very, I look back on that with, with, with pride, um, not pride at boasting, but to, I look at, I guess maybe not pride, maybe admiration. I look back on admiration with the opportunities I've had, the support I've always had from my family to pursue this type of thing, um, from my parents supporting when I was a child and, and on through the early parts of my career, uh, you know, my wife today supporting me in knowing that sometimes I'll be gone for a week or more and doing this stuff. And it's, it's just a part of what we do with our existence and our life and knowing that I have that, um, as my foundation, um, yeah, so maybe not pride, maybe admiration that, that, uh, this is what I get to do with my life. And, and I look back at that with great fondness and definitely never take any of it for granted. So that's it for story time tonight. I have gone well over what I had planned to talk about and blathering on, but Hey, it's late at night. It's been a long couple of days, but I want to get this video out anyway. So with that said, I hope you had a wonderful day today. Let's see. Today is, I was wrong earlier this today. I was, it's Tuesday. And I think I said that in the opening, it's the 28th. So I hope you have had a wonderful Tuesday, although you're all probably watching this Wednesday because it's going to be so late when I post it. So may you have a wonderful Wednesday. All right. So, and if, if not a wonderful Wednesday, then have an awesome Thursday or go kick Friday's butt and have a great weekend or whatever it may be. All right. All right. I, I'm just blathering at this point. Have a good one, everybody. Oh, 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 oh,